This is the second video in a four-part video series debunking 50 arguments for a flat earth presented by V for Verity. This is debunking arguments 6 through 15, which are on screen now. As a warning, this is worse than part 1, and you'll see why I say that as we go along. Let's begin. None of the Apollo astronauts have ever sworn on the Bible that they actually went to the moon. What do you think that says about them? Wrong. Those clips are from a conspiracy documentary called Astronauts Gone Wild, in which moon hoaxer Bart Sibrel asks several of the Apollo astronauts to swear on the Bible of accounts of eternal damnation, perjury, and treason that they went to the moon. If you actually watched the documentary, something I don't recommend to anyone, you would have found out that Eugene Kernan, Alan Bean, and Edgar Mitchell all fulfilled his demand. By the way, this is irrelevant. The fact that certain astronauts haven't sworn on the Bible is irrelevant to whether or not they actually went to the moon, let alone what the shape of the Earth is. Yelling Bible at the top of your lungs doesn't change anything. I feel like we're going to be seeing these red herrings a lot. Speaking of the Bible, why don't you go ahead and read it? Make sure it's the King James Version. It actually says that the Earth is flat. That is debatable at best. Also, just because the Bible says something doesn't make it true. That's called the appeal to authority, and it's a fallacy. Did you know that NASA gets paid over $50 million every day just to lie? The first part of that? Yes. The second? Not so much. And even if you're right, that's still irrelevant. Rather than presenting actual evidence for your position, you are preemptively insulting an organization that opposes you in order to discredit it. That's called poisoning the well. Stop it. Why does anybody trust NASA, especially since Nazis were involved in its formation? Have you ever heard of Operation Paperclip? Seriously, wake up! Yes, I have. However, I reiterate, so what? Again, poisoning the well doesn't disprove what anyone says. Stop it! Did you know that the people who founded the heliocentric model were Freemasons and Satanists? Just like how yelling Bible doesn't change anything, yelling Freemason or Satan doesn't either. Again, stop trying to poison the well. It's petty, irrelevant, and it makes you look like an idiot. If you take a close look during live streams from the ISS, you can see air bubbles, proving that the footage is taken from a swimming pool. No, those are probably small chunks of water ice. Jaren tried to object to that explanation by stating that the particles shouldn't have been ejected from the ISS at that speed, but he forgot that since space is a vacuum and the airlock isn't, the pressure difference caused the air, and anything else in its wake, to be propelled out of the airlock. Also, even if you were right, how does this show that space is fake, let alone that the Earth is flat? Stop it with the red herrings. Address the subject at hand. Additionally, Italian astronaut Luca Parmitano almost drowned in a spacesuit during an EVA. And you still think the ISS isn't underwater? Yes, that happened. However, it was from a leak from the water-based coolant system inside of the spacesuit, not a hole or tear from the outside of the spacesuit. Also, once again, stop it with the red herrings. On top of that, in some videos taken from space, you can clearly see people in scuba gear. Oh, and by some, I mean none, since they were all taken down. That means you have no evidence to support your assertion. What was the point of putting this in your list, especially since this is, once again, entirely irrelevant to the position you're arguing against? Natural physics, which actually proved that the Earth is round, mind you, 
how being in space is really impossible. What do you mean? Well, regardless, this is yet another red herring. Just because we can't go somewhere has no bearing on whether or not it exists, let alone what the shape of the Earth is. How rockets cannot possibly work in space. In what way? What I'm guessing is that you think that rockets need a medium to push off of, in which case, you're wrong. Rockets operate upon Newton's third law of motion, which doesn't need a medium. It's literally a Google search away. How air pressure can only be sustained within an enclosed system. Wrong again. Plenty of videos are already up that demonstrate this, and I have one in the top right corner for you. And finally, the science of physics with mass, buoyancy, without gravity, and density. For the last time, wrong. Firstly, density isn't a force. Secondly, buoyancy requires gravity to work. I'll explain. The buoyant force is created as the materials in a medium attempt to move downwards towards the Earth. This forms a pressure gradient. The pressure at the bottom of the medium is always higher than it is at the top due to the additional pressure applied to the material above it. This means that the buoyant force always pushes things upwards. So what force makes anything move down? Gravity. Buoyancy requires gravity to work. It's that simple. That'll be it for this video. Next time, I'll be responding to proofs 16 to 30, which is 15 in total for that one guy in the back. Hopefully, V will actually try to show that the Earth is flat next time. See you then.